Welcome to Forum today. With the, today we have a special guest from Fox uh, Publishing in L.A. Uh, Greg Curtis has been uh, running the uh, Fox Creative Publishing Division since uh, 2000, which means he has a lot to do with ringtones and all those things. We're talking about those today. Uh, Greg graduated from UCLA in 1987 with a degree in poli sci. So uh, he kind of drifted into the music business from the uh, from another direction, running publishing companies and starting uh, a, a recording studio, and also uh, uh, ran a, a small jazz label and a um, um, an indie label for for, uh, for music as well. Um, Greg has been uh, Tessa and um, is it Jenna? Yeah, Jenna uh, worked at work for uh, Greg this past summer at Fox, and um, I think set some high standards there that uh, Greg will tell you about. So uh, please welcome uh, Greg Curtis. Thank you. <clears throat> so why don't we get right to it, Greg? Why don't you tell everybody what, what creative publishing means? Well, Fox is a little different than, say, Warner Chapel Music or EMI Music. Fox is a production studio, TV, motion picture, uh, news, sports. We don't sign artists like EMI or Warner Chapel. We don't have a record label like uh, Warner Records, EMI Records. Most of our content, in fact, all of our content is actually created as a result of our productions. Um, so our catalog primarily contains the underscores from our motion pictures and our TV shows, um, themes, main title themes from our TV shows like Angel and Buffy and The Simpsons, things like that. Sports themes from our programming like the NFL on Fox, MLB on Fox, and uh, news themes from, I'm sure, the Fox News Channel, which I don't know how many of you actually probably watch, but, uh, but there's, you know, that is something that uh, Fox Music Publishing, as the repository of all music publishing assets for, for 20th Century Fox, uh, manages. So what I actually do is I take the copyrights that we control and try to repurpose them or relicense them into other productions. So we license actually quite a lot of bit of our uh, quite a lot of our business actually licensing our film scores for motion picture trailers, which sometimes people don't even consider uh, the music that's behind a trailer. Uh, music is a post-production element for films. So by the time the motion picture uh, is edited and scored there is oftentimes uh, the marketing campaign will have been in theaters for five, six, seven months. So marketing departments for studios really don't care what the music is for the film. They need to put people in the chairs, so they'll go around and license music, recognizable music or music that sets the tone uh, for the movie that they're trying to sell. So our catalog with composers like John Williams and Danny Elfman, John Ottman, John Powell, people like that, it's quite a lucrative business for us. Um, repurposing assets from films that nobody's really ever heard about and actually perhaps didn't do a lot of business. Uh, there was a movie called Only the Strong that came out in 1993. Um, there was a song that came out of there, Zoom, 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 which is better known as the main theme now for the Mazda car campaign that's been running worldwide for the last five years. So we may not actually have made more money than the film, but uh, th you know that one license, especially in a worldwide basis, through synchronization royalties and performance royalties worldwide, you know, has been has been very lucrative for us. And then, of course, in the last few years, with the you know explosion of the wireless entertainment industry, we have been very aggressive in ringtone licensing. And that's actually why I'm here in New Orleans this week. Um, there's a convention, the CTIA convention, the Cellular Telephone Industry of America. Basically, all of the cell phone companies, cell phone manufacturers, equipment manufacturers, and content creators, aggregators, or uh, back-end uh, delivery companies are here meeting, um, discussing changes in the industry, uh, negotiating deals, meeting with people that they uh, do deals with, and uh, kind of planning out the next phase of wireless music products. What's coming? Well. Strangely enough, the United States is actually quite far behind in the cellular technology end of things. Japan and Southeast Asia are kind of leading, leading the edge, especially South Korea, but Japan and South Korea. Uh, Europe, Western Europe is about two years behind Japan, and the United States is about two years behind Western Europe. Yeah. So right now what's big 
in Southeast Asia and is emerging in Western Europe is 3G or third generation, which is basically high speed broadband access for your phones. So <clears throat> right now, and actually you'd be curious, how many people here have a cell phone? Just, would you mind raising your hands? Okay. Now those people, how many actually purchase ringtones? How many, how many people have actually purchased a ringtone? Okay. It's very interesting, and as I was saying to Tessa earlier as, when she was driving over, I actually really welcome the opportunity to speak with you because a lot of times what industry experts are telling us, you know, Jupiter Research, et cetera, telling us about you, which is our target demographic, doesn't seem to be jibing with what is actually coming out of the mouths of our target demographic, uh, which is very interesting. There are hundreds of millions of dollars right now being invested on the development of wireless entertainment products, uh, music products, games, musical MMS, which are messages, premium short messages. Um, there's a lot of VC going into it, uh, venture capital. There's a lot of companies right now that are being created daily specifically to create this content. Um, Fox actually has been a very aggressive participant in the wireless business uh, for the last three or four years. And one of the announcements that uh, uh, the head of content for News Corp, which our parent company, gave a speech on Sunday at the Mobile Entertainment Seminar with a gentleman named Paul Palmieri, who is the head of content for Verizon. And one of the things that Fox is doing, because Verizon has actually launched a 3G network in the United States, as well as Sprint, but Fox has created um, a new product called Mobisodes. Basically what these are, they've taken the TV series 24, and have created one minute um, episodes or mobisodes to be viewed over your mobile phone. Uh, somewhat parallel to the content that's actually going on with the program, but different actors. Like Kiefer Sutherland is not in it. Um, so they've, they're starting to sell that on a subscription basis and also on a per download basis. Fox has also created two original uh, soap operas that are sold specifically uh, through mobile devices, Love and Hate and Sunset Hotel, and also they're starting and just announced the launch of Simple Life Mobisode. So if you don't get enough of Paris Hilton uh, on Tuesday night with Simple Life, you can actually get streaming content from uh, through your cellular phone if you're a Verizon customer. So be sure to sign right up. So there are a lot of issues. Yeah. Um, so as these new products emerge, there are you know, entire new licensing. There's new creative opportunities, but there are new licensing issues that uh, come up um, on a regular basis. And in fact, just with, with polyphonic ringtones, there are licensing issues that uh, kind of make it difficult for, for certain companies to sell content. Like in the United States, as a publisher, I can license directly. So in our business strategy, we have done deals with all the major carriers. Um, we have, we felt that it was the best way to go as opposed to other companies that are out there. You may see like Jamster or Zingy.com who are content aggregators because of the brand, high brand visibility and brand recognition of, you know, but the Buffy, the Vampire Slayers and the X-Files and the Simpsons and the Family Guys. Um, we do our deals direct. We charge a premium revenue share and um, so far the business has been uh, very, very well for Fox. But outside the United States, um, all of the ringtone licensing is controlled through the collecting societies. So MCP, you have to pull a, you have to pull a license from PRS and MCPS in the UK, SASM in France, GEM in Germany, et cetera. So they take their uh, minimum statutory rate and it asks, it, so it not being a Warner Chapel or an EMI, we're, we're a domestic entity only, we're actually prevented from being a member of those organizations. So there are issues that, you know, issues that have, we've had to work out as far as doing licensing around. Which is actually one of the reasons why we um, launched uh, this website, which we can go into later too. Well, so you're, you as a Fox Corp is not allowed to compete in <coughs> Europe because it's... No, it's like with, in the United States, uh, you have to be a an American publisher to be a member of ASCAP and BMI. Right. So in the UK, you have to be a UK publisher. We're not a. We're Warner Chapel as Warner Chapel UK or EMI UK. We don't have that entity. You have plans for that? No, we're. Uh, it's kind of strange. Fox Music is 
considered a service division of 20th Century Fox. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, we're not we're, our focus is not supposed to be generating revenue. However, in four and a half years, I've never actually you know <laughs> seen anybody validate that. Um, so Fox as a studio traditionally hasn't taken a very proactive view of the music division. That's one of the reasons why we don't have a record label. It's like, we're there to service film, we're there to service television, we're there to service the news and the sports channels, but that's about it. So the only copyrights that you own are the copyrights that are generated by the producers or the, the product? The, but the productions themselves, production. exactly. Yeah. Which actually you know, provides a different kind of obstacle for somebody like myself when we do a deal with um, Wind Up Records, for instance, we're doing a film coming out called Fantastic Four, which is going to come out in July. So Wind Up Records is doing the soundtrack. Uh, I think Hoobastank will be on there, Velvet Revolver, a couple other bands, right? Since they're not signed to Fox, but it's a Fox project, we will end up being a co-publisher of those copyrights. But the percentage generally isn't the primary publisher percentage. We may end up owning anywhere from 6% to 15%. So it's difficult for a creative director like myself then to go out and approach an advertiser and try to pitch that song for commercial because I don't, I can't vouch for you know what the other publisher is going to charge. You know? oh, so that's why it's really important when you go out, if any of you go out into the music publishing business, which I highly recommend, it's a fantastic part of the music business, one of the most important things to do is to really know your catalog. Know what content you have, know what your rights are, and because we don't own the primary portion of most of the songs in our catalog, we then tend to focus on creating licensing opportunities for our underscores, for our TV themes, for our sports themes, which is what leads us into commercials, movie trailers, wireless entertainment, and things like that. Know your content and uh, you know, create new opportunities to exploit it in the, in the proper areas. I noticed you were selling these, um, these MP3s for two bucks, but dollar 99. How does that break down? Who gets that money? Well, actually, the downloads are uh, 99 cents. Oh, okay. Digital downloads are 99 cents. Polyphonic green tones are dollar 99, and the master tones are 250. Basically, when you sell wireless content through a carrier, um, they take anywhere from 40 to 60 percent of the revenue. Really? Yeah. That's, that's the one thing about wireless that's a little different than the internet. If you, anybody with a computer and some freeware can put up an internet site and start selling things. Wireless content, you have to deal with the telephone companies. And because of that, they pretty much set, set the price. And so we actually, through our site, which we can go through, we, we deliver content uh, to AT&T customers, Singular customers, Sprint, and T-Mobile. But we actually, the way we deliver it, um, since it's not being directly billed to the carrier, our, our rates are higher. But basically what happens is you take out your delivery costs, your credit card costs, and the remaining portion, um, usually we get a 25 to, 20, say 25% revenue share off of retail for uh, a polyphonic ringtone, which is a premium rate. Uh, industry standard is usually 10 cents or 10% of retail. But like I said, by virtue of really going out and aggressively studying the wireless market, we were able to drive higher revenue share for our products. You know, if I was an indep independent label, I wouldn't have that kind of clout and my content wouldn't have that cachet. But people want The Simpsons, people want the Family, family Guy ringtones, people want Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I must say, even though we we request and we get a higher revenue share, we don't actually just license our content and then back away. We develop long-term partnerships with the carriers. We do cross promotions uh, to send traffic to their sites. We do a vigorous copyright infringement search on a regular basis to make sure that nobody is selling unlicensed content, which would take away from legitimate sales uh, for the carriers. Um, just by virtue of The Simpsons being on TV somewhere in the world every minute of every day, you have constant brand reinforcement for those programs. So I must say, we drive a hard bargain, but we bring a lot to the table, and subsequently, our partners are happy. You know? Do you, how many people are buying these downloads from you? Well, this is actually a relatively new um, site. We just launched it, 
end of the year and we're still kind of in our shakeout phase. As far as kind of aggregate ringtone sales, it's interesting because you hear a lot of figures being thrown out there. Five billion US in domestic ringtone sales last year, three billion, et cetera. Um, I'll say this without actually giving numbers because I, I can't. Um, it has developed into a significant revenue stream for us. Um, Obviously, it's not you know 10% of our of our net revenue, but we're a performance-based catalog. You know, we make the the lion's share of our income is from you know foreign performances of our motion pictures or TV shows, generating performance royalties. That's where the bulk of our of our income comes in. Licensing income now over the last four years since I've been there um, has grown to probably be a, a much more significant part of the catalog. Uh, or much more significant part of the, of the revenue stream. And, you know, wireless is growing. Um, we license not only music for ringtones, you know, when you guys play, how many people buy uh, wireless games through your phone? Anybody? All right. It's very interesting. I, I think I'm going to burst a lot of bubbles when I go back to the convention because <laughs> if, if you see what the projections are for that area, I mean, there are companies that are... Yeah, you know, crazy VC money being thrown at companies that are creating wireless games. I mean, it's supposed to be this huge growth segment in the market. Now, obviously, just out of curiosity, if, if you don't mind, for those of you who don't buy pro ringtones, um, games, etc., is it the cost? Is it that you don't have interest in those products? What are, what are the main reasons why you guys aren't uh, fulfilling the target demographic that they want you to? How, 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 Right. So there's no point in me pay shelling out even like fifty cents for a new ringtone. Okay. Because like I mean yeah it's cool but like I just don't need that. Interesting. I think of my cell phone as a phone, not as like a tool for a multimedia. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. It, it's probably going to develop into that. But it's on the well, uh, I don't know how many of you watch. Is there somebody back there? That we had their hand raised. Uh, Apple just announced uh, about a month or so ago a partnership with Motorola to develop a cellular phone that will have iPod capability. So things are moving towards that direction. But it is interesting, and that's one of the, the problems that I have generally with this business is, let's not forget, it, there is a primary purpose for the product, which is, you know, it is a telephone. And exactly. And being in conferences like this, now obviously there's a lot of tech people, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, uh, equipment pr sellers, but you know, sometimes I think that some of the people that are developing applications and content for this forget that it is, you know, primarily a communications device. And did you have a question back there? It's global. Well, yeah, you have smartphones like the Trail or the BlackBerry phone and things like that. Yeah, I mean, like, how is that growing in comparison to like, the presence of the global market already? Like, do, you, do, you think their, do you think their predictions are wrong? I think their predictions probably are not long, wrong in the long term. I think they may be overly optimistic in the short term, but that, as an emerging you know, business segment, that happens quite, quite frequently. But, I mean, I'll put it to you this way. A... Trail 615 or a BlackBerry costs anywhere from $399 to $599, all right? I think some of the issues, and th those are the smartphones with web access and your calendar software as well as, a f as well as your digital camera, as well as your phone. I think some of the people feel though, um, am I going to invest $400, $500 in something that's going to be obsolete in six months? You know, there's kind of a wait and see look for that. I mean, how many people here, in your current economic situation, have any interest at all in spending $500 on a cell phone? Yeah, probably not. You do? All right. 
That's one. Okay, good. Um, but so I think they may have overly optimistic uh, projections for the short term. Uh, also, you know, and it's very interesting. A lot of the metrics that they're using, especially in the for some of these entertainment applications, are are from data that they're pulling from South Korea and Japan, which is strange to me that we're basing you know, a domestic US business model off of what's going on in Southeast Asia. Um, you know, I'm sure people use cell phones differently in New Orleans than they do in LA. LA, we are car-based. You know, we have very little public transportation. You're always in your car, so you have a tendency to see people on their cell phones constantly. But again, they're using it for a communication device. They're not playing games. They're not checking things. You know? You always see people in this conference showing everybody what's the latest, greatest application that they've created for themselves or for their company. Um, on Sunday, we were walking around, going to dinner, and I asked somebody from Fox Sports if UCLA had made the, the NC2A tournament, and they were more than happy to open up the Fox application and show me, you know, what came through. But again, you know, it served its purpose then, but generally speaking, I don't know you know, what's going to occur with this. But I, I think there's a lot of parallels to the wireless market, um, similar to the internet industry and the, you know, rash of internet music companies and internet licensing companies that occurred, you know, six, seven, eight years ago. Um, when I went to meet them, it's uh, 96, 97, uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of internet music startups. So many, in fact, that at the Palais, uh, they had to open, you know, they had to, you know, expand to have a whole new region for the internet music companies. The next year I went back, I think there were 10% of the companies that were there for the, from the year previous. I think that you're going to see in the next 12 to 18 months, you know, a lot of shakeout in the wireless business. But uh, we'll see. Hey, look, from my perspective, uh, it's another distribution channel of music. You know, we distribute it through film, through TV, through video games. To me, it's, it's an exciting new application. Um, it's just another distribution channel. And I don't mean just like it's a bad thing, but you know, we have a tendency in the music industry sometime when we see something to get overly excited, to kind of focus everything on the short term, and then perhaps kill the golden goose uh, you know, with the, with the long-term potential of what it could be. I see a lot of record labels actually trying to, now that master tones are a new product that's available, so you remember the first couple years, you know, the little monophonic ringtones sounded like a bad Casio keyboard. Now you've got polyphonic, which are a little better. The record labels were totally cut out of the revenue. There was only a publishing uh, royalty in that. Now that master tones and ringback tones are, are part of the new product segment, labels are jumping in with a great gusto. And quite frankly, um, they've caused some friction with the licensees. Um, with the end consumers because of the prices and also with the publishers that they're working for because of the high revenue share that they're asking for. So we'll see. You know, a, some record labels seem to be trying to recoup their losses from the illegal peer-to-peer -peer music transfers through, you know, short-term sale of master tones. So we'll see what's all going to shake out. But, you know, once 3G and streaming broadband video is available for your phone, you know, there will be streaming video clips, you know, music videos, uh, MTV and music channels like that will probably be available. I mean, right now in Europe, when you're in Italy or in other countries like that, you can watch sporting events in live in real time uh, on your cell phone. Uh, you can watch MTV Italy on your cell phone. And it's not the choppy, distorted, uh, you know, video that you were seeing when the internet first started that was like, if you squinted really hard and had a really good imagination, you could actually see what's going on. So when you see the product actually work as they have designed it to, it's actually kind of exciting. So we'll see. But right now, it's a nascent uh, business in the United States. But again, we're making a lot of money. Money off of ringtones, money licensing our themes for uh, wireless games, musical MMS, and a variety of things. So it's an exciting, it's an exciting time. Sounds like a trick to raise cell phone bills to $1,000 a month. Well. You know, interesting enough, they've, they've actually had some statistics about cell phone use, which I just may happen to have here. <clears throat> um, the total 
number of wireless subscribers in America now exceeds 180 million, with a penetration rate of more than 60 percent. All right. Strangely enough, the average local monthly bill only grew by 1.5 percent. So, although Americans use more than one trillion wireless minutes, which was a 33 percent increase from the year before, the bill really hasn't grown. So dramatically. So we'll see. Do you have teenagers? I, I just recently married. I don't have any children. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about a minute about the music and, and video games. I mean, you license music for video games as well, right? Yeah, we license music for video games. Uh, two, two distinct segments. One is for video games from Fox Properties, like the Simpsons Road Rage game. And then one will be where we're just... Uh, EA or Activision will contact us to license a song for one of their games. And it's kind of interesting thing in the industry, the way it's occurred. Uh, EA did a large overall deal with Def, Def Jam uh, a few years ago, and Activision's kind of followed suit, where early on in the video game industry, uh, they used to license music on a per unit sales rate. So you license a song in there, we'd get anywhere 10 to 12 cents a unit. Now they do actually complete buyouts. Um, so depending on how valuable you are as an artist, they may license you, uh, they may license, give you $25,000 to use your uh, song in the entire video game and that's it, it's a one-time royalty. It's similar to movie licensing, synchronization licensing, um, but you know, if you're outcast and they want to use you in a movie right now, you're going to pay five hundred thousand dollars to use an outcast song. Right? You know, video games—they're uh, still not paying those kind of fees. And then, of course, movies generate uh, performance royalties where video games don't. It's interesting, too, because video game sales are ridiculously high right now. I mean, Halo Two when it came out, uh, first day sales—I think they finally figured out were 128 million for first day sales of Halo Two. I mean, very few domestic yeah. motion picture releases reach that, much less, you know. Yeah, Fox had a movie out this week, Robots, number one movie. We did 36.5 million over the three-day weekend. So, and the great thing about uh, video games from a publisher's perspective, not a music publisher, but a game publisher, is very high degree of brand loyalty. So if people bought Halo 1, you know, they have a tendency to, to be the people that buy the next version as it comes out. It's benefited, that brand loyalty has actually benefited the music industry, not perhaps from placing songs in the video games, but actually for soundtracks that are video game soundtracks, all right? Mo motion picture soundtracks, depending on you know, the movie and the songs that are actually on it, have kind of had an up and down you know, return over the last few years. Well, Fox did quite well with uh, the, the uh, soundtrack from Garden State, which we released, uh, won a Grammy Award, um, and I think be certified platinum, but that doesn't happen that often in the movie soundtrack business, but it's not rare, it's not a rare occasion for a video game soundtrack to sell three, four, or 500,000 units because the fans want to buy the music wow. that they hear in the game. So that's had a, a uh, secondary benefit to the music business. A lot of a lot of bands or a lot of record companies are trying to break bands and video games. Exactly. You don't exactly. really have that problem because you don't have that kind of contact. Right. right. Exactly. But for instance, they're doing a uh, video game in conjunction with the motion picture release of Fantastic Four. So there'll be a lot of uh, you know we're working with them uh, with Wind Up Records and we're also working with Marvel and Activision. And it's wow. a concerted effort. So nowadays you can't just do one thing. Everything you do has to be tied into multiple uses and multiple opportunities, multiple Absolutely. income streams. Yeah. Well, even, look, wireless is such a hot thing that now, I mean, robots just came out last week. There was a whole wireless application that was created specifically just around, around robots. Ringtones, a game, uh, wallpaper, screensavers. So yeah, this is the hot, wireless is the hot button right now in entertainment. So. For motion picture studio like Fox or TV production studio, it's all about uh, wireless applications as additional, um, you know, product sales. For, and I, it's interesting because they're using it in some circumstances as a promotional tool, but it's also being monetized. So it, it's kind of a nice thing. But it's a company-wide. It's company-wide. Um, certainly, News Corp and, and 20th Century Fox 
has been a major player in the wireless wireless space for the last four years. Very aggressive. Do you your division? How many people work in your division? Fox Music is about 50 people. Fox Music is made up of film, Fox Film Music, Fox TV Music, Fox Music Publishing, and then um, legal and business affairs and finance. Fox Music Publishing, there's about 10 people. There is 10 people. And when you and all those people are dedicated, or most of them are dedicated to making deals for the for the content that you control. No, my my area is myself, the director of licensing who reports to me, and a coordinator. Uh, that's why having Tessa and Jenna there last year was a godsend for us, really. But they were, I got to say, um, I'll show you in a little while the uh, new e-commerce store that we launched. But uh, Tessa and Jenna were actually played a vital role in helping us be able to launch uh, this platform on time and were very instrumental in formatting and providing content for us to put up there. And unfortunately, for the interns that have come after them, they've set, set such a high level of, uh, of quality that uh, everybody else is, kind of gets the short end of the stick. But uh, they were fantastic and a real, um, you know, we, we, that's why we love to have more Loyola students. If there's anything like Tess and Jenna, come on out and uh, be interns for Fox because we, we love to have them. Are you going to give them a back end check? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have to discuss it. <laughs> So internships in L.A. Yeah, but I think uh, I would recommend, I re not just at Fox, but if you have the opportunity to intern for a studio, studio music commission, record company, music publisher, by all means, take that chance. Take that opportunity. Um, I think that uh, we, we certainly benefited from them. I think they benefited from having the opportunity to work for us. And because they were so competent, we didn't give them busy work. They actually played a vital role in helping us run our department on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, as a result, as I said, we were able to launch on time. And as a result for them, I think they got a good taste of what working in a, in a studio is, is really like. And they've got uh, any kind of recommendation and referral that they could possibly need from right. Fox. So. Well, that's, that's important. Yeah. Um, do you want to show the website? Sure. A now, as I said, Fox is a little different because we don't have a record label. We also, as a brand, because we represent film music and TV music, sports and news and other products, Fox Music as a brand doesn't really have a, a very specific and distinct brand image. Also, people kind of think, well, if it's on Fox Broadcasting, that must mean you own it, right? Well, no, not necessarily. We don't own the OC. We don't own American Idol even though it's on Fox. Consequ uh, we actually owned Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, but uh, they were actually never on Fox. Fox Television Studios produces TV content, primetime network television content, that is actually viewed on CBS, NBC, really? the WB Network, uh, ABC, as well as Fox. At one point in time, we were the first studio to have sh primetime network shows on all of the six uh, networks. Okay. We don't have anything on UPN right now, but yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. I never really would have thought that. Yeah, well, you know, everybody has their own production entity. You know, Disney has Touchstone, Warner Brothers TV, and they do try to pick from those production entities if possible. But like right now, NY NYPD Blue was a Fox show that just went off the air. There's a new show, a new John Stamos show called Jake in Progress that's on ABC. That's a Fox show. Uh, Reba on the WB. Uh, a couple shows on CBS. So yeah, people, you know, different networks buy different product from different studios. So what we try to do, and since we don't have a record label, we actually don't really have an idea of who the quote unquote typical Fox Music customer would be. Um, by dealing with uh, record labels, you know, they sell, you know, they wholesale to record stores, record stores sell to, uh, you know, the customer. There's not a lot of feedback about who's buying that. And if the record labels are getting it, they're certainly not sharing it with us. You know, you have kind of broad, you know, customer profiles about the record industry in general. Um, so Fox never had a straight business to consumer uh, entity and any kind of business opportunity. So we've been looking around for a while to see what we could do to try to monetize our assets more directly to the consumer and also try to learn about the Fox music customer and build, Fo build awareness about the Fox Music brand. So this, here is, this page here is the landing page for foxmusic.com. 
basically this page just is divided into three segments. The licensing segment, which anybody that is a music supervisor or a producer for film or TV, anybody that's looking to license music for their production can go in there and uh, take a look at our catalog, listen to streaming music, and then actually generate a license request to our department. Down here you see we have links to all of our soundtracks. Uh, usually go to Amazon.com or whatever you know, uh, our label partner wants them to go to. And here is a direct link into our B2C hybrid platform. It's actually kind of a unique, when we launched this at the end of November, we were the first music division of a production studio to launch this type of platform. And it is a hybrid uh, pl platform that can sell any kind of digital or wireless content. So in, in a way, we are similar to an iTunes store because we're selling downloads, but we also deliver wireless content, ringtones, um, master tones. We're actually doing content deals. One of the things I'm doing here is uh, talking to the content publishers that are doing deals for like robots and for the, for the games. So since we can sell any kind of wireless content, we want to create a more robust uh, purchase option for the consumer. So you spend a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money driving people to the website. Once you get them there, instead of just selling them a $1.99 ringtone, you want to offer them a variety of different products and get that per customer click mm -hmm. or per customer purchase price a little higher. So as you see, we have robots, which just came out this week, um, Alien versus Predator. And this is kind of a unique website Got this hot picks, which basically is a direct link to the product page. There's five or six different shows, or NFL on Fox is up there, Robots is up there. You can link directly to that page. As you see, we have our top selling ringtones that you can preview and purchase through here. Like I said, we can sell directly to AT&T, Singular, Sprint, T-Mobile. We're adding other um, companies, and we're also selling adding other handsets. You pick your, pick your handset. Pick your phone. And then you're set up to purchase products off there. Now, this was actually the uh, remix of the main theme from 24. And what we're actually trying to do, there's a, there's a kind of a unique marketing uh, campaign that we're running uh, at the end of this month in Miami, Florida at the Winter Music Conference, which is the big uh, techno dance uh, DJ music conference in Florida. We have uh, the 24 remix was actually done by Armin Van Buren, who's one of the top DJs working right now. And we actually have a DJ that works for Fox Music. She works in the TV department during the week and on weekends she is hired out to play around the country and be a DJ. So she actually created a remix for Alien vs. Predator. What they're doing at the Winter Music Conference is they're spinning these songs at five or six different uh, parties during the course of the event. Behind the DJ, when the music plays, there will be a video that's related to either 24 or AVP, and there'll be a short code on, on the screen that will tell you if you want to purchase uh, the remix from 24, text in AV123, right? It'll send you back a SMS message through your phone with a password and a login. Then at the end of the Winter Music Conference, since we don't anticipate people doing that during the conference, uh, it will actually send a reminder message to your phone to go and log in on the website. So this is actually a very interesting premium SMS campaign. Really hasn't been done before in this manner. And this is one of the... Um, this is one of the ways we're trying to learn about the Fox Music customer. Sure, it will be nice to sell product through that, but it's more important we're actually trying to create and, and begin and end a marketing loop, one that starts through your cell phone. So we're reaching out the customer through the cell phone, and then we're learning about the customer on the site. And when they go on the store, when you log in, this little thing will pop out, and this is actually a digital locker which stores all of the, your content that you purchase off the site as well as your 
uh, personal information, and it's digitally secured. So this was, one of, this was the project that Tessa and Jenna were primarily working on, and through their efforts helped us be able to launch this uh, on time. So we sell ringtone, we sell WMA, Windows Media downloads, and you can search uh, through a variety of different, for different products, buy TV series, just do 24. So when you go to the 24 page, you can buy the ringtone for 24. You can buy the three various remixes that Armin Van Buren did for the 24 uh, theme. You can buy the end credits. You can buy all three of them at one time. That's your best bet. Or you can buy the entire 24 soundtrack. So we're actually now able to create a destination for customers that are looking to purchase Fox Music product, all right? And it's actually, the, des the desire is to, when people go on here for 24, and then they'll see, oh, I didn't know that Fox owned Buffy. I can buy Buffy here, or I can buy robots here, or I can buy, you know, a variety of different things here. So help increase customer awareness through that. We're offering, you know, different bundles we did a promotion with our home entertainment department. That's one of the, that's one of, that was one of the primary uh, driving forces behind the creation of this as well, is to give us um, a better business opportunity to do larger cross promotions with the other Fox divisions, right? You know, 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment, by virtue of DVD sales, is one of the most, you know, uh, successful business divisions, probably in any studio right now, DVD sales are through the roof. And, it's, and the great thing about DVD versus, say, first-run theatrical is they have built up a database of customers that have, that have asked. They actually do pre-sales of DVDs so that by the time the DVD is released, they've got a, uh, a mobile market, or excuse me, an email marketing database where they sell, you know, they send people out to remind them that it's out there. So we take advantage of it by doing, you know, offering to include, say, music in their, in their email, so it kind of makes it a more uh, interesting or enhanced uh, promotional effort for them, and in return, they have a link directly back to the page of product that they're selling, you know, they're selling a DVD for. And then for here, you can buy a ringtone, you can buy a wallpaper for one touch of a button for $5.97. Is that primarily how you market the site? Well. Right now it is, we're actually in the process of, uh, we will be doing some uh, advertising through Google and uh, Yahoo and MSN. And it, once we actually f finish some of these content deals that we're doing right now, we will be doing some uh, traffic sharing with Fox.com, the Fox.com portal and the FoxSports.com. So right now we have shared links with Home Entertainment, uh, Fox Sports, Harper Teen, Fox Movie Channel, they send traffic to us and vice versa. So this is supposed to be like the central hub of all of our marketing efforts and cross-promotion efforts. Uh, so far, you know, we've just basically launched at the end of November, and so we're still kind of in the shakeout phase because um, it's only been the first month, but the response has been really positive from the consumer end and the response from the other divisions at Fox has been very supportive. Everybody's looking to partner with us to drive traffic to the site. And uh, music is, uh, you know, so I like to tell people when, from the time you're born, yeah, see this is our new product. You can buy one of the three ringtones from Robots or you can buy the Robots digital EP. So for one click, and one of the interesting things too, there are a lot of, a lot of enhancements to the site that um, are kind of unique and first time for, for a music company to do things like that. When you purchase some things with your American Express card, credit card, you get a lot of people earn loyalty points, right? So we have a loyalty point program. Anytime that you purchase product off of the Fox Music Store, you earn Fox, Fox loyalty points. Um, we have a viral marketing component through this site as well. So that if you purchase something off the store, 
and you say, you know, my buddy would love that NFL on Fox ringtone, you can send an email to them with the link back to the site. So we're actually, everything is protected, DRM protected, so you're not selling the product, you're sending a link back. If I send you an email, you purchase it, I get five more loyalty points. What we did is we did a uh, loyalty point redemption program with our home entertainment department so that when you reach certain levels, you can redeem those points for free shipping of DVD, $5 off a DVD, $10 off a box set based upon your, your loyalty points. So that was kind of a unique thing as well. So we're working you know, to incentivize people to buy more product and then reward them with uh, discounts and working with home entertainment to provide you know, a back-end fulfillment. So it's actually going very well and uh, we're looking uh, to expand this. We're gonna be going uh, outside the United States. We're gonna be launching this in uh, Western Europe. <coughs> Uh, second quarter of next year, or second quarter of this year, we're going to be adding carrier billing to the store so that you can actually go to the site and purchase stuff through your phone and it's just billed to your cell phone bill instead of having to use a credit card. Um, and again, we're trying all these unique types of marketing campaigns like the at the Winter Music Conference, things like that. The great thing about mobile and mobile marketing is you can take advantage of some not too obvious opportunities to, to sell product. You got HarperCollins or HarperTeen, which is a book publisher, all right? If you have a SMS premium short code, all of a sudden now a book, which you wouldn't necessarily think of as a mobile marketing device, you know, you, put, you print that short code on there, all of a sudden they can dial in directly and reach our store and create an account by getting something off a book, all right? <laughs> We are working with our TV department to put a short code at the end of certain TV programs. Really? So, so at the end of 24, you'll see if you want the 24 ringtone, touch this yeah. in and get it. Uh, we're working with our home entertainment department to add uh, the short codes into the DVD packaging, hopefully maybe on the DVD menu itself. So this kind of opens up a whole wide array of opportunities to monetize our product and actually create um, some awareness of who our customer is. Once we do develop that awareness, the next thing is to create a WAP version or a, or a web-enabled version of this store that you actually will be able to load through your cell phone. So a, a version of this store you'll be able to access through your cell phone so you can navigate and purchase content of all types directly through your cell phone. So that's, that's basically the primary um, project that I've been working on for the last you know, six or eight months. But, uh, you know, from a Fox and News Corp perspective, they place a lot of emphasis now on selling direct to consumers. So this actually fits right in with uh, that overall corporate scheme of things. Well, you mentioned you might need some information about your, your market, the demographics of your market. You want to ask the... Uh People well, hear any questions? Well, I've actually, you know, I actually asked some of those questions already. I mean, you know, how many people buy ringtones? How many people buy video games? Um, did, did you do market research to determine your products? Did the people really want your products? Well, initially, the emphasis behind launching this was not to necessarily go at first-run motion picture titles or TV titles, right? Because, again, you don't know if people want that content initially, all right? What you do know is what, what the intent was, it was to take advantage of home entertainment or Fox Sports, their databases of, of you know, opt-in databases from people who purchased their product, uh, mobile marketing databases of people who've signed up to receive uh, Fox Sports product or DVD product, and then to work with those divisions uh, especially when they're, they're selling uh, DVDs to take advantage of the pre-existing fan bases. And also to sell, you know, uh, it's, it's pretty much a no-brainer to know that people want the Simpsons ringtone. Yeah. You know? Also too, since we've been in the, in the wireless business for three years, we can see from our sales through the carriers what is selling very strongly, and we use that as the template for our wireless content. That's so. amazing. And then oh. quite frankly, as far as our digital music content, it, it actually came down to what we had the rights to because mm -hmm. since we're not a record label, we had restricted rights on digital downloads. So for instance, 
this robot score uh, EP, which is up there, we actually don't have the digital download rights to it. What we did do is a distribution deal with the label Veriz Saraband, similar to what they did with iTunes. So they, they did a deal with iTunes to distribute, and we said, why don't you give us the same deal, we'll sell it off our website. I was going to say that. Why, yeah. Nothing to stop you from licensing material from any other um, producer of content. Well, we want to keep it to Fox-related. Okay. That's the whole emphasis, because again, okay. we're trying to build brand awareness of right, Fox. Right. So well, We've got a few minutes left. Did anybody have any questions um, for Greg? Yeah, Jay. Um, let's say the site does very well and you know, other you know, third parties are really interested in the concept and kind of method of how the site works. Are you all open to letting third parties do business through your site using the same kind of layout and providing content to you? Well, in the short term, probably not. Again, we didn't develop the back-end technology. There's a company called Navio Systems that is our technology partner, and they're here, and they're working. They have a uh, site that they power, TVT Records, where you can go get your, you know, your favorite Little John or Ying Yang Twins uh, ringtones, digital downloads as well, and they're doing deals with... Uh, they had just signed a deal with Fox Sports to enable their mobile storefront. Um, as far as us selling third-party content, We'll see. I mean, again, it's actually a question of, of time and resources and headcount. Again, this is supposed to be a small part of what I do, you know, and wireless is supposed to be a small part of what I do. And again, there's really a three-person department that oversees all of this, plus the licensing of, you know, probably six to 700 transactions a year through our licensing department, which have to be negotiated and papered. So. As far as adding third-party content, a lot of that will depend on whether we can actually get the uh, personnel to support that. Any other questions? No questions. Everybody's got this ringtone business down pat, huh? Either that or they're board stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, just one announcement. I think we'll meet senior seminar in this room. So but in the meantime, let's thank Greg for coming out today. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.